great American multitude and sports fans everywhere. Today we inaugurate the 20th annual transcontinental road race. Today, the five bravest young men and women in this bravest of nations will risk their lives in the greatest sporting event since the days of Spartacus. Three days hence, a new American champion will be crowned for all the world to behold in awe, in respect, in fear. All right, all right. This is Junior Bruce, your buddy, buddy, and mine. And I'll be giving you the blow-by-blow, play-by-play when the kings and queens of the open road roar onto the track. Do I hear the sound of engines? It's Calamity Jane Kelly, queen of the road, at the wheel of that mean old ornery stud bull. Zany Janey, winner of this year's trials at Watkins Glen, placed second in 1998 and led in last year's second lap until she went out with gear trouble. <laughs> Her fans and lovers everywhere wish Janey better luck this year. My fans can wish me all the luck they want. If my luck with my lovers gets any better, I'll miss the race completely. Isn't that right, Pete? Oh, At the start of the race, only a heartthrob away, this is Grace Pander on the spot, as usual, to welcome the greatest racer of all time and a very dear friend of mine. Yes, in just a moment, he will be coming through the doors. There is no cause for alarm. The patient has been flown in from abroad in a state of suspended animation in order to facilitate the healing of his recent limb transplants. He should be coming around any moment now. Frankenstein, can you give me an exclusive? How are things abroad? How is Mr. President? Is he still in Moscow? Mr. President is in his summer palace in Peking. He loves everybody. And everybody loves him. Here she is, that adorable swastika sweetheart, Matilda the Hun from Milwaukee, and her lovable Nazi navigator, Herman the German Fox. Matilda, Herman, do you think this is your turn to be first and foremost in sunny California? Today, California. Tomorrow, the world. Hiya, Herman. I hope your buzz bomb has a little more juice in its warhead this year. Whoever named your car the bull was only half right. Frankenstein, will Mr. President fly in to crown the winner of the race? Yes. Is it true that with your new mechanical arm, you can shift gears in less than a twentieth of a second? Would you care to comment on that? No. How do you feel about going into the race with a navigator you've never met? You'll love Annie. She's a red-hot sex pot. She better be a red-hot navigator. No more questions. It's the lion! And at the wheel, Ray Nero the Hero Lodigan. Never has finished the Transcontinental, but three big wins in the provinces this season, plus a brand new beast, means Nero's not fiddling around. Sit still, Cleopatra, and stop blocking me. My fans want to see me. <laughs> They've never seen a has-been before? Annie Smith? Mr. Frankenstein. I've checked out the car and everything seems perfect. I have the route maps right here. I will check them in a minute. We will roll when everything seems perfect to me. I've uh, packed some high protein capsules and as many adrenaline tablets as I could find. And I've also assembled a medical kit, just in case. I'm trained as a nurse. I don't need a nurse, I need a navigator. Mr. Frankenstein, 
You're very good at what you do, and I'm very good at what I do. We'll see. And you know, there's only one person who guns an engine like that. It's got to be the roughest, tough guy of them all, Machine Gun Joe Viterbo! Here he comes, Machine Gun Joe, loved by thousands, hated by millions. Only living previous winner except for Frankenstein, highest lifetime score after Frankenstein, and he's certainly getting the welcome he deserves. Joe doesn't look too happy, but you just can't keep those Frankenstein fans down. Lousy sons of bitches. Frankenstein! Give it to them, Joe. What Frankenstein? I give it Frankenstein! Frankenstein the indestructible, sole survivor of the titanic pileup of 95, only two-time winner of the transcontinental road race, Frankenstein, ripped up, wiped out, battered, shattered, creamed and reamed, a dancer on the brink of death, Frankenstein, who lost a leg in 98, an arm in 99, with half a face and half a chest and all the guts in the world, he's back. God only knows what he looks like under that mask, but he is back. In the name of Mr. President, America loves you, Frankenstein! You will regret that, Joe. Stay tuned, racing fans. T-Video Satellite will bring every mile of drills and spills into your living room. All five cars are in starting position here at New York Memorial Raceway, ready to roll. Now, we take you to the Summer Palace and Mr. President. My children, whom I love so dearly, it has been my duty in the long and difficult years since the world crash of 79 to serve you as best I could. Never before in history have the masses forgone all comfort so that the spirit of genius might thrive and seek the golden key to a new time of plenty in the fertile field of minority privilege. And now, my children, the drivers are ready, the world is waiting. Once more, I give you what you want. Good morning, Americans. Once again, the race is underway with 12-hour pit stops scheduled at St. Louis and Albuquerque, home of the American Indian Museum. At this very moment, the cars are howling through the streets of Manhattan, but no points have been scored as yet. Take it away, Junior Bruce. They're coming out of the Lincoln Tunnel now, with Frankenstein and Joe running neck and neck. Then it's the lion, driven by Pass By, Calamity Jane in the bowl, moving into third place.
the drivers taking off on their favorite routes. Frankenstein still out in front, headed due west, with Nero the hero on his tail, hoping to pick up his leftovers. Calamity Jane's on a northwest tack. Matilda's buzz bomb is trying to catch up with Machine Gun Joe, now streaking southwest. Once again, Mr. President. I have made the United Provinces of America the greatest power in the known universe. I have also given you the most popular sporting event in the history of mankind. The transcontinental road race, which upholds the American tradition of no holds barred. No holds barred. That's how he got to be president. Hypocrite pig, what about our ultimatum? He's been laughing us off for 15 years. Passive resistance means nothing to him. Pick up that flag, young man. It's time for action. It is not a time for violence. Mrs. Payne, I love Annie as much as you do. But she's no match for Frankenstein. And we can't risk letting him get away. Frankenstein is the biggest target in the world and a personal friend of Mr. President's. That Lieutenant Fury is exactly why they'll call off the race. To save his life. My granddaughter will succeed. Don't you ever take off that mask? No. Don't you know about my face? I've heard stories. Nobody's ever seen it, have they? Except my other navigators. And they're all dead. So they are. They say you lost most of your jaw in the crack of 92. And my right eye in 95. And my nose and my left eye in 97. And most of my cranium in 98. I'm held together with patches of plastic and steel plates. It's not a pretty sight. You want to see? Why not? I've seen everything else. Remember, you're doing this on your own. I take no responsibility. What you expect? Another pretty face? the guy was only 38. Just two years older, he'd have been worth three times the points. But for the second year in a row, Machine Gun Joe has splattered the scoreboard first. How'd you like that, huh? You know, for that one, Myra, baby? What's the matter with this engine? I don't know. Sounds fine to me. Amateurs. Get back there and retard the spark for uh, three degrees. Glad to see you were able to find your way back. As the cars roar into Pennsylvania, the cradle of liberty, it seems apparent that our citizens are staying off the streets, which may make scarring particularly difficult, even with this year's rule changes. To recap those revisions, women are still worth 10 points more than men in all age brackets, but teenagers 
now rack up 40 points, and toddlers under 12 now rate a big 70 points. The big score, anyone, any sex, over 75 years old, has been up to 100 points. As always, how fast you move determines how long you live. Jane today. No, sir. And you can bet she'll be getting both ears for that one. What is that? Euthanasia day at the geriatrics hospital. They do it every year. score, boys and girls, just 110 points out of a possible big 700. What do you think about that, Gracie? Well, those doctors, dear friends of mine, have been pretty smug all these years, setting up the old folks. Frankenstein must have decided it was their turn. Which only goes to show that even the fearsome Frankenstein has a 100% red-blooded American sense of humor. <laughs> Annie saved those old people, and she'll deliver Frankenstein. Meanwhile, innocent people are being slaughtered on our highways. Yeah, they're like Christians being thrown to the gladiators. <laughs> but just remember, the Christians won. Did they, Mrs. Payne? I take it from your attire that your sabotage operations are being carried out despite my wishes. Mrs. Payne? We're set to hit him with everything we've got. Then, in the name of humanity, let Operation Anti-Race begin. How in the hell are we supposed to score in this graveyard? You're the navigator. That's your problem. You better think of something pretty soon or else you're going to be out in your ass. It isn't my fault everyone scored before us. You should have gone after that Boy Scout camp like I told you. I tried a goddamn Boy Scout camp. You know how fast those Boy Scouts move? Now here's something more your speed. It's gonna be at least 200 points. If they scatter, go for the baby and the mother. Come on! Go for the baby! The baby! That's it. Come get baby. Bye bye, baby. Hello, 70 points. Hey, I'm off the air. I'm off the air. Would you please what take happened? your place? Don't, don't, don't take don't your muscle. places. What You're mine. We'll have Grace on with an interview right, right now. Hello, ladies. Isn't this just the most exciting race in years? I certainly think so. And guess what? I have a surprise for you. Mrs. Rhonda Bainbridge in person on my show. <laughs> the widow of Edward Bainbridge, whom, as we all know, was Machine Gun Joe Viterbo's first score. Welcome to my home. And may I call you Rhonda? Oh, please do, Mrs. Pander. Are we about ready here? Yeah, just about. So we have to go right away. 
as the widow of the race's first score, you have won a high-style two-room apartment in Acapulco. Start the jam! <laughs> For 20 years, Americans have been told when to eat and when to sleep, when to love and when to hate. The age of obedience is over. In the names of George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and Harry Truman, I call upon you to stand up for your inalienable rights. We declare war upon the party on Mr. President and on that most inhuman desecration of life and liberty, the transcontinental road rape. I thank you. What the hell was that? I have no information. Is this race still on? I have no information. Well, what do you think? About what? About that speech. Add spice to the race. Spice? They've killed Nero. Yeah, they would have got more points for me. Don't you understand? They've declared war on the race and on you. Aren't you worried? The only thing that worries me is Machine Gun Joe for terrible. Is winning all you care about? Yes. It's the only standard of excellence left. Come on, here they come. It's about finished. Come on. Look at that stupid hole right in the middle. They won't get through there. It's me! Yeah! The Americans converge from all their roots and head for the first pit stop in St. Louis. Machine Gun Joe is still leading the field with Frankenstein second, Calamity Jane third. Leaving Matilda the Hunt in fourth position and Calamity Jane facing another calamity. Right now, Frankenstein's score points put him just ahead of Joe. Hey, Joe is get off the rope! Spring Jesus Chrysler, get off the rope! Arriving first in St. Louis. Hey, dummy, come on over and hold the lap. This aggravates me. Where's the one that says, welcome Joe for turbo? Score in the center of a big show, you need every point you can get. I only mashed him slightly. Put him out of his misery, Joe. Hey, is that fair? Yeah. Hey, should I let him go? Fair's always right. One thing before we begin. The government would like it if nobody said anything about Nero. Understand? He hit a tree and that's it. Got it? We don't want to depress anybody, but... Hey, hey. Everybody knows he was blown up by the resistance, you schmuck. It was on television. If you want to drive again next year, Mr. Viterbo, you'll keep those opinions to yourself. Okay, go ahead. This is Grace Pander from St. Louis, where Matilda, a dear friend of mine, is receiving a well-deserved rub-down. Tell me, Tilly darling, 
What can we expect from you when the cars go back on the road? You can expect a victory by a member of the master race, <laughs> a woman. Oh, Tilly, darling, that certainly is showing a lot of confidence for someone who's lying fourth out of four. She doesn't mind as long as she's lying somewhere. Look, when I'm through with you, you're going to be lying in state, lady. Listen, miss, if anybody is going to Boot Hill, it's you and your biz bag. Buzz bomb. Shut up. Look, you just leave my navigator on. <laughs> girls, 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 remember you're on TV land. <laughs> Pete, how do you like being a navigator? Well, Junior, I'd like it more if I was in the driver's seat. You'll get what's coming to you on the road. Oh, yeah? Well, what's coming to me is the final solution to the cowgirl problem. Frankenstein, can you tell us when you're going to make your move? Are you going to take any off-road chances for scores? Or are you driving all out to be first in the new L.A.? It's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. Frankenstein, a dear friend of mine. Frankenstein, tell me how it feels when at that electric instant, driving at 200 miles an hour, life and death coexist at the moment of scoring. You stand in the middle of Route 66 tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. And you can answer that question for yourself. Just tell him I was whispering sweet nothing in your ear. <laughs> well, Myra, what did Frankenstein have to say to you? He didn't say anything. He, he didn't what did he say? He didn't say nothing. Look, I'm not playing games here, Myra. I want to know what he said. He said there was nothing sweet in my ear. In my ear. What do you want? My name is Lori, Mr. Frankenstein. I'm head of Chapter 7, St. Louis Lovers of Frankenstein. I was chosen from over a hundred girls. You offer me your body? Is that it? You want to make love to me because I drive the monster and wear this costume? No, Mr. Frankenstein. Well, that wouldn't be fair to your navigator. It's taken her years of hard work to earn that privilege. Besides, we understand your feelings. What do you know? my feelings. Everything. Like... Like why you're afraid of falling in love. And why winning the race means everything to you. How do you know these things? From my dreams, partly. And from letters I get from other fans. Plus the club subscribes to an astrology service. Well, if you're not here to offer me a body, what do you I wanted to meet you, Mr. Frankenstein. I wanted you to know who I am, so it would have meaning. I don't understand. So what would have meaning? We love you, Mr. Frankenstein. I know just saying it doesn't mean much. Why do you love me? Because I kill people? Scoring isn't killing, Mr. Frankenstein. It's part of the race. You're a national hero, and we want you to know we're with you 100%. Good night, Mr. Frankenstein. Didn't he come in? What were you expecting, Machine Gun Joe? I thought I could trust you. You really just don't want to give me a chance, do you? I was trying to help you. I'm sorry. You what? Sorry. He wanted to know our route, so I told him to go down 54 through the Cimarron Valley. 54 is a dead end. It means nowhere. That's right. And if Joe takes it, he's sunk. The only way Joe will take that road is if he sees us do it first. Or if he's ahead of us. Is that the arm that came off the 98? Mm-hmm. And which one of those 
obviously perfect legs was came off in 99. And the right. And the left one was just broken in six places and burned down to the bone. Is that right? Mm-hmm. It's a miracle you can still walk. Do you like to dance? Swiss mechanics sure did a good job on you. What else did they replace? Wait a minute. And I'll show you. Uh. Oh, Mr. President, bless thy children and make them strong. Bless thy daughters, Matilda and Jane and thy son, Joe. And bless thy beloved son, the immortal Frankenstein, who has given so much pleasure to so many. The hell with Frankenstein. What about Joe Viterbo? The flag is down and they're away with machine gun Joe blasting into the lead on this second lap of the great transcontinental road race. Frankenstein is making a left turn, splitting early from the pack. Look out, all you folks just south of here. Gee, Joe, there's nobody even close behind us. <laughs> Where's he going? What's he doing? Hey, what are you doing? Where are we going? I dropped my glove. Let not the ruin of thy robes destruct the tires of thy body. Oh! Eisler! Ladies and gentlemen, by a bizarre accident, Frankenstein has killed our cherished colleague, the deacon of the bipartisan party. I think you did that on purpose. You have to give the fans something to talk about. It's my obligation as a national hero. Frankenstein scores now. Does that score count, Harold? An interesting point, Junior, and one that may set a significant precedent. Can a racer score a race official? Oh, and after all those nice things he said about him. It don't matter. It don't count. You can't score religious personalities. The word deacon has been handed down to us from the ancient... The uh, Frankenstein score has been approved for 50 points. The confirmation has just been handed to me. Why, you know what that means, Junior? That means that the race officials from coast to coast will be falling like flies. Oh, Frankenstein! Oh, I hate him. I hate him. He's elevating. Chicken in a basket. 
kicking in a casket. within range. I shall give the signal. We'll have just under a minute oh, after they reach yeah. the turnoff. Uh -huh. Lieutenant Fury figures... <laughs> Lieutenant Fury has nothing whatever to do with this. I want none of his surprises here. <laughs> I could stand for a surprise, like if Frankenstein didn't show up. Don't worry. He'll show. What's our estimated time of arrival in Albuquerque? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, this detour is going to make a difference. Haven't you calculated our time of arrival? Well, of course I did, but I couldn't take into consideration Take then. what into consideration? Frankenstein, stop the car! Hold on. What the hell? Keep going! Don't stop now. What are you doing? What are they doing? Sorry, brother. That's the best ambush the Resistance can come up with. We got nothing to worry about. I guess not. One thing I can't figure out is why would they bother to dress that guy up to look like me? Maybe he was a fan. Who built this stinking road? If I ever get my hands on him, I'll rip his heart out! I made it! I'm sick of this race and I'm sick of you! I guess it must have been Joe that set us up for that ambush, don't you think? Got in touch with those guys somehow and told them where we were going? I guess it might have been. But then how the hell did Joe know we were going to take a detour? Maybe it was those guys on the pit crew in St. Louis. Took your book out of the car while you were getting massaged. I didn't leave my book in the car. You didn't, huh? No. Well, then I guess it couldn't have been them. What do you think it was? I have no idea. Why do you care, as long as they didn't get you? Us. They didn't get us. We're a team, remember? Come on over to my side. You're going to drive for a while. Why? I'm not, I'm not trained as a driver. Never mind why. Just do as I tell you. I think I need to make a nice big score for us. Sure. Especially mine. How it'll turn out? <sighs> I'm sure that it will. Hey, 
Cornball. What's the fastest way through here? Well, um, actually, the way the only way we do it is we get a bulldozer, we trim this edge down here, and we drive through. But no, no. What's the fastest way between here and Albuquerque? You got to go back to the main highway, really. But it was 45 minutes. I've seen you before. I'm one of your greatest fans. You know that? I follow all of the races. I got pictures of you all over the outhouse. I named my favorite dog after you, Mr. Frankenstein. I did. Lousy, stinking dirt ball. You got two seconds to live. <laughs> to get on the road, make a few more scores. My bloodlust is fading. I'm almost finished, Calamity, sweetheart. We'll be back on the road in no time. Then we'll cream that Nazi's ass for her. What you say? <laughs> Somebody's going to run over him. Special bulletin, there's been an accident, an explosion. It looks like Matilda has been blown totally. Correction! Matilda has made an impressive score. Stand by. Don't you want to take over now? I'm afraid of making us lose an awful lot of time. You're doing just fine.
like an easy score? Yeah, yeah, it does. It's always best to start small. on the road. How far is it to the penitence compound? Oh, maybe 20 miles. Stop the car. Get out. Out. Come to the other side. Around the front. Where is the penitence compound? In Japan. Get in. out of this car and pick up a quick 30 points. Who are you? Who are you working for? I'm Thomasina Payne's granddaughter. I'm honored. So you are going to capture me and replace me with that goon back there. What for? He was going to deliver our ultimatum to Mr. President. Your life in exchange for the permanent abolition of the race. <laughs> she was a great dear friend of mine and I shall remember her forever howling down that freeway in the sky, knocking over the angels. The valiant Hans' demise was, in fact, caused by enemies of the people. There will be a special broadcast by Mr. President at 1900 hours. Stay tuned to find out how you can help Mr. President preserve our way of life. Clemmy, turn off the tone. Our national honor. Hey, you guys want to stop playing that song, please? Look, what we got here is a race, a sporting event. Not some kind of daredevil stunt. I want some kind of protection. You should have given us an escort right after Nero got it. Come on, Joe, it's going the escort, wouldn't you, hey, baby? You want to zip your lip, Myra? Huh? Now, you going to cover me or not? Look, Mr. Viterbo, if you're afraid to go on with the race, why don't you quit? You're calling me a turkey? If you ask me, you're all just making excuses for poor driving. Poor driving? Oh. Listen, honey, Matilda the Hun was our champion driver. Ain't nobody could have scored my navigator and gotten away with it. And he's talking about poor driving. I'd like to see you out there. Yeah. Right I've been driving for 10 years. Nobody yeah, talks to me like this. You know, you're an idiot. It's all on account of the it's rebels. It's 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 rebels. Who mentioned anything about rebels? There are no rebels. Understand? Well, then, who was that old lady on the television? Promising a pain. She's a harmless lunatic. Could you please come outside, sir? We'd like to ask you a few questions. Come on, Annie. Alone, if you don't mind. Mr. President will explain those accidents during his address to the nation tonight. How did she jam the networks? How'd she bump off our friends? She didn't bump off anybody. She walked into a television station, waving a gun, forced them to put her on the air. Now, we've taken her back to the asylum, and that is the end of it. You know, I got just two words to say about that. Oh? Bullshit! Hey, I told you to stop playing that song! You seem to forget, Joe, that Laura. I'm a representative of Mr. President's government. I happen to hold the power of life and death. Yeah? I happen to hold a clamp up. <sighs> Look out, Viterbo. You may be the second biggest clown in this circus, but if I want you dead, you're dead. <laughs> Sit down and eat. I told you to stop pouring that music! Were they armed, or did they expect to fire in the ditch?
bridge to be enough to stop you. I don't know what they expected. We just ran through it all and kept on going. Just one more question, Mr. Frankenstein. Did you take that particular road on your own initiative or on the advice of your navigator? On my own initiative. Thank you, Mr. Frankenstein. That will be all. There has been a lot of talk about American rebels. We have positive proof that it was none other than the treacherous French who have been sabotaging our great race, just as they and their stinking European allies have undermined and destroyed our great national economy. It is no coincidence, my dear children, that the word sabotage was invented by the French. Where's Annie? I don't know. Time, hey, did you hear the news? The Mr. President said it was the French who knocked off Nero right. and Matilda. Gallant heroes. Watch out for the creeps, Suzette. Calamity, Jane Kelly, Machine Gun Joe Viterbo, and Frankenstein, as they begin the last lap of their long and difficult journey toward new Los Angeles. Drop the key. I was just looking for something I lost. The race? Look, Joe. I threw you off course, okay? All's fair in love and war. I'm glad to hear you say that, Annie, because what we got going here definitely ain't love. Well, then why don't we just forget about it? You know, Annie, it's too bad that things ain't like they were in the old days, and we just take somebody in an alley and blow the brains out. You know? Joe, please. Go ahead and scream, Annie. You're hurting me, Joe. There's nobody to hear you. Huh? <coughs> How does it feel to know you're going to spend the rest of your life in pain? The rest of your life. It's about a minute and a half. Uh -huh. Hey, Frank. Uh, Frank, I'm glad to see you. I caught your navigator trying to uh, screw around with the car, so I thought I'd come out and have a look at uh, what was going on. You know what I mean? Hey, come on, Frank. <laughs> chance I get. You're dead. What were you doing down there? Getting more secret instructions from the lunatic fringe? Why don't you just turn me in and get it over with? No need to. You've blown your cover. You're no threat to me. Anyway, you're not someone I would throw away. I have a job to do. Your job is a waste of time. The world doesn't want to be saved. I'm giving you a chance to save one small part of it. Yourself. Who are you, anyway? Nobody. I was brought up in a government training center to be just what I am, Frankenstein, the best driver on Earth this year. Use one up, they bring in another. 
But I will be the last of the line. Oh, who's kidding who? I never kid. Why don't you ever take off that glove? What's underneath it? It's my secret. You and the Swiss doctors again? There are no Swiss doctors. Just Native American. No wow. Check the oil? Yes. You check the hydraulics? An hour ago. Brakes, tires, water? Yeah, they're okay. Everything's okay. Don't worry, I'm not going to do anything to sabotage the car. You get a load of that face? Yeah, I wonder if somebody got points for that eye. Listen, Frankenstein, there's just you, me, and Joe left in the race. And, well, I just want you to know that whoever wins or whatever happens, it's been really grand racing with you folks. I also want to say that I think you make a real nice couple. Thank you, Jean. Good luck. Joe, Myra, I just want to say, whatever happens, whoever wins... They save it for the French. The cars are started, lined up, and ready to roll on the last lap. They're off! Frankenstein, Coley, Chrysler! Joe has just scored his own pit crew! You know these sons of bitches! Joe Viterbo, that funny man from Chicago, has scored his own mechanics for 40 points and is off to catch Calamity Jane and Frankenstein. Will you, Joe Viterbo, and your mother? Wait till you get to New L.A. first with the highest score, too. It's coming up on the left. Forget it, I'm keeping Frankie in my sights. He's got five minutes on us, and he's stretching it. So what? If there's trouble up ahead, he'll find it first. Oh, yeah. Take a look at your face. You'll find it first. You know, Myra, some people might think you're two. But me, I think you're one very large baked potato. Roaring down motorway 66 towards California, Frankenstein looks certain to be first across the line, but Machine Gun Joe is still way ahead on points, and he could win the race even by arriving second in New Los Angeles. What's your prediction, Grace? You know, Junior, when Machine Gun Joe was just a little boy in Chicago, he had a pet snake that he used to love to ride over with his tricycle. <laughs> Thank you. 
Break out the thermos of high protein. Coming right up. Vanilla? It's pink or something. Yeah, well, my chase bus got wiped out in the crash of 97. <laughs> well, it's a good thing that mine is still intact. At least the French can't poison us. What's Frankenstein's location now? He's about 50 miles out, Lieutenant. They're coming fast. Goodbye, Mrs. Payne. When you see me again, Frankenstein will be my prisoner, and the whole country will know we must be taken seriously. Fury, wait. I'm coming with you. No, Mrs. Payne, it's too dangerous. Nonsense. I've waited 20 years for this moment. Oh, I know I can't join you on the mission, but I want to see you pull it off with my own eyes. A couple of turnoffs coming up. What's the quickest way to New L.A.? That's funny. What? I can't, I can't seem to focus my eyes on the map. I think we stay on seven. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Look at that. It's them, isn't it? Hey, please stop the car. Sorry. We're in a race. Stop right now. We want to talk to you. Stop before I force you to. I think we got this race one. Aren't we gonna help him, Joe? What are you, nuts or something? I'm getting my ass out of here before they decide to make emergency landing. Come on, sit down. That a girl.
Frankenstein has just been attacked by the French Air Force, and he's whipped their derrieres. His point total for this one will be something astronomical. Machine Gun Joe better watch out. Right on schedule. Hey, what happened? I slipped you a 30-minute sleep X. Didn't want you doing something back there we would both regret. Did they attack us? According to the radio, we were attacked by the French Air Force. Was the plane shot down? Even those Swiss doctors couldn't have helped. I'm sorry. I know they were your people. But I can't let anything stop me now. They didn't expect you to give up easily. They were prepared for whatever happened. Oh, my God, you've been hit. I'll make it. I'm sorry things worked out this way. It's not over yet. I'm afraid it is. Hey! That is the dumbest, sorriest thing I've ever heard you say. I don't believe you've got a drop of Thomasina Payne's blood in your whole body. The minute things get rough, you close your eyes and try to drive us off a cliff. If you just stop trying to kill me for a minute, I need your help. How can you possibly expect me to help you? You're my navigator. You're the only one who knows where you're going. I mean, whose side are you on, anyway? I thought the only thing you cared about was winning the race. Sure. Only the winner of the race is to shake hands with Mr. President. Is that a grenade? A hand grenade. That handshake is all I've lived for for as long as I can remember. Now, wait a minute. I don't want you to die. It's my life's work. <laughs>
You're gonna have to shift the gears for me now. The only thing that worries me is how am I gonna shake hands with Mr. President? Mr. President's the one who should be worried now. Mr. President, our enemy, the French, have destroyed nearly all our gallant races. Just as they have crippled our once great economy and wrecked our telephone system. But even they, in all their evil power, were unable to destroy Frankenstein, who is the embodiment of our national virtue, and therefore, Indestructible. It is fitting that Frankenstein should be the one chosen by your president to lead you in this war against the French, which I now decree. Frankenstein has been shot. There is a French spy in our midst. God, see that woman. Frankenstein, are you all right? first official acts will be? I plan to pension off the secret police, restore free elections, end minority privilege, and move the seat of government back to New Los Angeles. The country has been governed from abroad long enough. Mr. President Frankenstein, is it true that you are now accepting rebels into your government? Well, since I have accepted one into my house. President Frankenstein has appointed my great-grandmother, Thomasina Payne, in view of her experience in the field, as the Minister for Domestic Security. And I plan to deal very harshly with rebels. Anybody who is unhappy with happiness can go find someplace else to live. <laughs> what about the race? The race is abolished. Abolished? That's right. We feel that the country no longer needs this gratuitous display of violence to show the world that its virility is still intact. Right. But, Mr. President Frankenstein, isn't it true that as a racer, your popularity depended entirely on violence? I'm afraid I shall have to let my press secretary answer that question. Stop annoying Mr. President with impertinent questions, Junior. It's the race, man. President Frankenstein, you can't call off the race. The American people won't stand for it. Get out of the way, Junior. The race is the symbol of everything we hold dear, our American way of life. Sure, it's violent, but that's the way we love it. Violent, violent, violent. And that's why we love you. Frank, do we have to listen to this? Be violent. No. no. As to this matter of violence, the technique of violence was first developed in 2 million BC by the Australopithecines, a tribe of four-foot primates who had no brains to speak of, but who nevertheless invented the tomahawk and used it on each other. This practice led to the enlargement of the brain, another useful weapon. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, murder was invented even before man began to think. Now, of course, man has become known as the thinking animal. <laughs>